Hey guys, it's Mike with CEP TV, standing out here in Glen Heights, Texas today at a beautiful Barrier Reef Sydney Harbor Spa Pool combination. And we're making a video today to show you how to run these two zone single pump systems and how to adjust and, and work your spa or your pool one way or another because that's what we're doing. We're taking one body of water and separating it with valves and controllers into two bodies of water on the same system. To take all the confusion out of this, we're going to walk right over to the pad and we're going to start talking about how this works so that you understand how to run this system. One of the things that's important to understand is kind of how the system works and it's not as complicated as all these valves make it look. Essentially you're doing two things with any body of water when it comes to a recirculation system. There's a suction side, that's what we call the inlet, then there's the return side or what we call the outlet. What we're doing on a spa pool combination, regardless of whether it's a standalone spa or whether it's a pool spa combination such as the Sydney Harbor, is we're taking and determining which water comes from and goes to which place. So what you're gonna see here when it comes to, to these different valves, kind of the generic description of these valves are Jandy valves, that's a, just a really popular name for them, but truly what there are, are there three-way diverter valves. And what they're doing is just what it sounds like. We have two different places that are able to draw water in. One is the spa and one is the pool. In this situation, this outside pipe is our skimmer draw or the pool body water draw that's coming up this pipe and into the pump. On this side, we have the main drain or the spa water that can be pulled up in here and sent to the pump. All we're doing with this valve is determining which side we're drawing the water from and sending into the pump to recirculate. The same is gonna apply on the outlet side. When we come out here to the outlet, one side is sending back to the spa and one side is sending back to the pool. In this situation, it's the same thing. We're simply making a determination as to where we're drawing from and where we're sending back to. Now, understanding how a pool and spa works is really important. When you have these pool spa combos, you're trying to zone the water off because you may want to have your your spa nice and hot, but you don't necessarily want your pool nice and hot. Spas run usually in the neighborhood of about 105 degrees when you're trying to get your therapy, but you don't want a pool that's 105 degrees, especially if it's in the summer. So what you're doing is you're able to then at that point zone off just the spa for the heating purposes, which means we're gonna draw from the spa and we're gonna return to the spa in a loop. And that way, as we heat the water, it's not escaping out into the pool, it's continuing to loop and heat up, keeping that spa zone of water nice and hot, but keeping our pool water at the temperature that's comfortable to swim. The way that's done is real simple, regardless of whether you have Hayward valves, Jandy valves, any other kind of three-way diverter valve, one side is going to be printed right on it that says closed. It's just like it sounds. If it says closed, that means that where that arrow is pointing is the arrow, arrow that's closed and off. So in this case, if we close it off to the spa, it's only drawing water from the pool. That means it's not going to take any of the spa water out. The same is true on our outlet side. If we close the spa off, then we're only sending water to the pool. In this case here, we always put our spas to the inside and our pools to the outside just to make it easy for the customer. But regardless of how yours is set up, in this case, we have the spa closed off for main drains, we have the spa closed off for returns. So we're pulling in from the pool and we're returning to the pool. Nothing is coming or going from the spa. Equally, if we're ready to heat that up, and really enjoy our time in the spa, well now it's time to make these adjustments the other way. Now we've turned this into a zone where it's simply drawing from the spa and returning to the spa. That way none of our hot water is coming back out and we're also not trying to draw cold water from the pool and send it back into the spa. We're simply keeping that loop tight so that it's able to come in heat the water, take that heated water, heat it even more, and so on and so forth, as that heater does its job to make that spa something nice and comfortable. Now in that case there, you're gonna see a couple of different things as we walk over here. We're gonna turn this up <clears throat> to a higher speed. And in this case here, what we're dealing with is also, in addition to your spa, we always install blowers. Now the blower, 
uses the jet that we install, the jet body that we install, to actually put water through the bottom of the, sp the jet body and air through the top of the jet body to give you that therapy effect. This blower right here, we're simply gonna switch on and then we're gonna come over and walk over to our spa. And since we have the pool completely shut off right now, you're gonna see the kind of action we're able to get out of our spa. This is where your therapy comes in. Now you may be saying to yourself, okay, but I'm spilling over into the pool. And that's true. For a while, it's going to take a little bit until these things equalize, but since we're not drawing from the pool and not returning to the pool anymore, during that hour or two that you have the heater on to heat the spa up, these levels are gonna equalize down to the point where it's no longer spilling over the spa into the pool. It's just going to keep that circulation going. And at that point, usually the pool's gonna be fine for the six or eight hours you might spend in the spa. <laughs> That'd be a long spa day, but for the time that you're spending in the spa, we're not worried about you know, those few hours changing anything to do with the rest of the pool. So by all means, let the kids, let the friends, let the family swim in the pool while the others are enjoying the spa and that's just fine. When it's time to move out of our spa, we no longer wanna heat the spa anymore and we're ready to go back to normal pool function, we do wanna make sure we change these valves back. So we're gonna come here and we're going to turn our blower off and now we're going to take and we're going to move the majority of our water is going to be drawn from the pool. It's nice to have a little bit drawing from the spa. If you have a standalone spa, I recommend that you don't have any drawing from the spa because it's impossible to, to match those two perfectly. But if you have a pool spa combination, you wanna draw a little bit from the main drains, that's fine. It's gonna help any contaminants that get down there, some dirt and stuff, maybe get sucked into the filter, a little less work. But on a standalone spa, always shut this completely off and just let it draw from the pool alone and that way you're gonna make sure that you never drain the spa down too fast. So in this case, we've completely shut the spa off. We're drawing only from the skimmer. And now when we return, we're gonna send the majority of the water to the pool. And even on a standalone spa, you also wanna make sure that you send some water to the spa all the time. And we're gonna go over here and show you why. The pool is your main body of water, and that body of water is the one that's able to actually get at the skimmer. Now when we set up our pools, we design our jet returns to always crisscross, zigzag, and send everything to the skimmer. So it's important that the majority of water that's in your pool is A, getting filtered, B, getting chlorinated or, or UV treated, and C, that everything that's top water related, like this leaf that I could not possibly have planned any better, is able to get into, eventually work its way over to this skimmer here. And you'll see how the skimmer is just drawing everything down. And as we finish this video, you'll see this leaf continue to move. This is why we want to take the majority of the water and keep it in the pool, but still have some spilling over. Because any leaves that land in this area right here are then also able to ride over the top of the spillover, end up in here, get chased into the skimmer. That's less work that you have to do. And that's the purpose of what we're trying to accomplish is the least maintenance necessary to be able to enjoy the investment that you've made. But guys, hopefully this covers your pool spa function questions and we will see you on the next one.